I call this segment snack time. Yum, yum, yum. You can have a snack. And it shows in detail how you go about uh, drinking a bag of tea, eating some bread and honey with some crackers and peanut butter, and then cleaning up your mess when you're done. It shows how you do that on orbit in a weightless environment. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and roll the, the video here and narrate. Here's a package of crackers. We're in the galley to area, the service module. And the crackers don't have any Velcro on them, so they'll just float away. So we take one of these little binder clips that have Velcro on it, and we, we clip the package of crackers to the clip, and then the clip Velcros to the side of the table. And you cut open the package with a pair of scissors so you can get into it. And then there's a package of Russian bread. The Russian bread, instead of coming as a big loaf that you have to slice and you make crumbs, they come in these little baby loaves. They're, they're a loaf of bread that scale well with the size of a Barbie doll. And so we refer to them as our Barbie loaves of bread. Uh, and they're really nice because you don't need to do any slicing and dicing uh, with the bread and making crumbs. You just uh, pop one of these little loaves in your mouth and, and chew it up. And so the Russians had a really good strategy when they made these Barbie loaves, although I don't think they call them that. And now we have a can of honey. This is a Russian can of honey. And when you open up some of these cans, sometimes they have this nasty habit of squirt. So you, you want to make sure you got a wipe in your hand just in case it decides to, to, to squirt you. And we're opening up with our, our can opener. And you, you use our, your chopsticks there to, to push on the edge of the can lid because it's sharp. But you don't want to cut your fingers. But there's no way to hold this can down to the table. So you, you get your bag of water out and you squeeze a little blob of water on the bottom of the can. And then you can use the contact wetting angle forces to hold the can to the table. Voila, it's stuck there. And now here's a close-up showing the can of honey. Now, I got a set of chopsticks that came up in the progress. I've been eating my meals with chopsticks, and I'm just showing you that here at zero gravity, you can eat your honey with chopsticks. And now I'll reach into that little sack, which I, I care, carefully cut it open in a particular way with the scissors so that you could conveniently reach in there and pull out those little Barbie loaves of bread. And then you can just stick them there in the honey, and you can reach in with your chopsticks. And the chopsticks work great for this because it keeps you from getting your fingers all sticky. And now you can just start eating them, and, and they're, they're really uh, yum yum. Now, now here I'm playing with my food. I know we're not supposed to play with our food, but there's some really neat surface chemistry going on here. So watch, watch this closely. Now look at that. You pull the little loaf of bread out, and it has this little tractor beam of honey still on it, and it sucks it back in. I was fascinated with, uh, with the surface tension forces here on that can of honey. And then you can use the stickiness of honey to hold the loaves where you want them. And since the lid has honey stuck to it, it makes a great place to park your little loaves of bread to keep them out of the way. Now, what goes well with honey is tea. And uh, it's, it's a standard Russian tradition to have tea with your honey. And since you have chopsticks and you're in zero gravity, you can eat your tea with chopsticks. They got a bag of tea. It's kind of off on the side there. You can see the straw sticking out. And the straw is what you normally just suck the tea out of the bag with. And you just grab, uh, you squirt out a blob of tea from the end of the straw, and you can just pluck it off with your chopsticks. And then you can just uh, ferry the, the blob of tea up to your mouth and, and uh, lick the tea off the chopsticks. It works quite well. It's, it's a beautiful example of surface chemistry at work. Perhaps one of the, the most useful applications of all the surface chemistry that I learned in college. And here you see a close-up. The tea coming out from the straw forms a nice sphere, and you just touch the chopsticks to the, to the sphere of tea, and the, and the sphere just climbs in between the chopsticks. And you just use your service edge of contact wedding angle. You can just pick up a blob of tea with your chopstick, and you can, you can eat your tea. And when the process of eating it, sometimes you spill a little sphere. You can just grab it with your chopsticks. And again, you just grab it, bring it up to your mouth, and 
Ah, doesn't get any better than that. Now it's time for some peanut butter. And our peanut butter comes in this tube package and, and you cut it open. One of the things you find when you're eating is you have all these little corners that you snip off of packages and scissors and can openers and napkins and plastic flaps and everything. And keeping all of these corralled uh, is, a, is a little bit of an art itself. It, it's important to be able to, to keep all of these things uh, where you know they're going to stay put. And there's nothing better than mixing peanut butter in with your honey. And it's not that much different than stirring honey and peanut butter together down here. But wait, look what happens when you're in weightlessness. Look at, look at what happens to your, your honey there. It just kind of stands up. It looks like some kind of a, a sea creature, some kind of a, a sea urchin or something sticking out of your honey can there. Now, when you're in zero gravity, a convenient place to park your chopsticks so you don't lose them is to leave them in your food like that. And I understand that that's kind of a social grievance to uh, do that, but I figured when you're in space, you can make an exception. And here we are digging into the honey and the peanut butter with our crackers, and this makes a very tasty snack. I mean, it, it's uh, you look forward. Uh, you look forward when you find a can of honey in, in your food ration. We get asked, particularly by school kids all the time, how do you eat in zero gravity? So I figured that this uh, will help show them that, that you eat in zero gravity pretty much like you eat on Earth, except there are a few extra nuances to it uh, uh, just because you're in a weightless environment. And something I've noticed, even though you don't need to hold your containers right side up in zero gravity when you eat, uh, we tend to hold all our containers that way, just, I think, because we're so prone to, to uh, uh, intuition in, in gravity, we just can't get over the idea that you could turn your container upside down and, and the stuff won't run out. Now, like, like any kind of snack, after you're done, you have to clean up your mess. Things that are wet, like the, the napkins, I park them there and let them evaporate out so we can reclaim as much water as possible. So just little moistures here and there. We, we let our tissues dry out, and, and then that will get recycled in our life support equipment. And you have this can, and if you just throw cans away, they're, they're fairly, uh, there's a fair volume associated with just throwing cans in a sack. So you want to crush your cans up. And we don't have a can crusher on Space Station. So what we do is we have this ritual of crushing cans using the handrails along the side of the galley table. And it takes a fair amount of strength to do this, but you could also think of it as it's good EVA strengthening exercise. It, it gives you good stre strength in your forearms, good uh, grip strength, which is what you need for doing EVA. So, in effect, crushing your cans from your meals on orbit is good practice for doing EVA. So, here we show uh, this honey can being crushed with the aid of using the handrail on the galley table. And you use a handrail to put two dents in it. And then you just kind of wad it up in your fist there. You just go, you do a Schwarzenegger on it. You just crush the can down to this, this little lump. And then we take all our perishable food items, all the things that have residual perishable food, we stick them in an airtight bag, which is just a rubber band to the side of the galley table. You just pop it in the bag, and then you seal the top again with the rubber band. And then when the bag gets full, you tie it off and you put it in the progress vehicle. And then you get a little wet wipe out and you clean all the goo off the table. And then you got to clean your scissors up because the scissors you use for cutting the packages open, they get gooey too. That shows how you start off preparing for a snack. You, you eat your snack and in the process of eating it, it looks like you're playing with your food, but you're really not because you're doing science. And then uh, the cleanup that happens uh, after you're done, you, you want to clean the galley table up. You want to get rid of all the sticky stuff. You clean your scissors, you put perishable trash in one bag, you put dry trash in another bag, and you make it all nice so when the next person wants to, to eat a snack, they have a, a clean table. And Houston Alpha, that's it for snack time.